Hey, what's up everybody? It's Wessel out here in Los Angeles. We've got uh, what looks to be a nice warm blue skies kind of day. Um, it's Tuesday in the afternoon. Got a lot of stuff to do, but I just dropped my phone. Um, the thing I wanted to talk about today, I'm gonna keep this running, is um, a question I posed to my audience on Instagram. And I wanna thank uh, six people in particular for making this post possible because without them saying yes, I wouldn't have done it. So let me read off my awesome fans and friends out there. Let's get these names up here. What do we got? Tina Stoner, she's, Tina Stone, love her. She's gonna, all these names are gonna be in the, uh, the description, pegged out. So my buddy Zach out there, my buddy Chrissy, Raider fan, Julian, Julian Susanna, I love her, and E.T., another good friend of mine. So many people here have been with me for a long time, and I just wanna say thank you, you guys fucking rock. You guys are uh, definitely one some of the reasons I'm still doing it. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to today talk about two pieces of art that I've done recently that really haven't been seen by anybody um, because I'm kind of keeping them close to, close to my chest because they're a part of a larger series. It kind of means a lot to me and it's not finished. And like, I've been so busy lately, I haven't had any time to do art. Like today, I really wanted to skip an appointment that I had so I could do some painting and stuff and like get to it. But I can't, I gotta be a responsible adult and do it. So uh, I'm gonna take uh, the time today to talk about, like I said, those two pieces of art um, that I made, I think about a month ago or so. And they combine a lot of different techniques and thoughts and um, processes that I hadn't used before, as well as kind of a freedom of um, like uh, how I create and why I create and stuff like that. So they're kind of interesting and very important pieces to me. And again, thank you to those uh, six people who said, yes! on my Instagram poll. Well, one of you said no, but then quickly messaged me and said, my bad, no, I meant to say yes. <laughs> I love you all for that. So, um, let me get to it. I don't want to spend too much time on this intro, so I will see you all in a second. All right, so here is the first one. I hope you guys can hear my voice clearly. Again, I still have not gotten a new mic. Sorry, life, like I said, has been busy. Not profitable yet, but busy. So, adjusting my glasses. This is the first one. And this was kind of, I think, my fourth attempt into paper mache on canvas. Um, the ones before this kind of turned out in interesting ways, and I liked how they, you know, the message behind them and everything like that. And then I got to this one, and I, I finished it. Like the, the, like if you look here, the paper mache part is done, but like for me, I was unable to see any sort of like pattern in it that that, it, that vibrated with me, that said something that I wanted it to say. And so it kind of sat around for, I think, a, a week or so or two or something like that. And I was practicing, um, you, not practicing, using spray paint on some of my other stuff. Um, I've got some other finished pieces, like I said, from the series that I haven't and don't want to show just yet because I want to, you know, do it right. And so I had uh, black spray paint left over. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try and put some texture on it and see what kind of happens. And, you know, I sprayed the black on there. And I'm like, you know what? I totally fucking hate it. Pardon my French. No, that's not French, that's English. But I, I totally hated it. There was like, I just couldn't figure out where to go with it. And like the whole entire thing, like how the paper mache was and how it felt and like the, the black on it, I was like, ah! And so I remember it was kind of like a morning out here on the porch and I was like looking through my art and a, and a buddy of mine was sitting there and I like, put, I'm like, what the hell do I do with this, man? I'm just like, and I walked into my room and I saw it and I looked at it and I was like, screw it. And so what I did was, is I, I pulled a canvas out and I had a can of red spray paint at the time. And I'm like, you know what? Again, fuck it. Failure is okay. Like, for me, this is like a total mess up. And it's it just like, I didn't get anywhere with what I wanted. It didn't feel like it said anything to me. So what I decided to do is to let the whole, let's just like the piece be itself the message that it's okay to fuck up and it's okay to not be good at something. And it's just literally okay because you know, it's just like, failure is just a stage of getting to success and all that jazz and, and it is so frustrating because it's like there's so many things I want to do but I feel like I'm just <coughs> like that that that's exactly like that sound effect that sounds really lame and stuff like that but that's like the feeling I have like I can't get it out it feels like I'm just throwing glop at walls and so like this frustration of this red X through like what I was trying to do and how I'd failed at it and to me as I did it it represented you know what like that red, that rah, like usually symbolizes rage and all that feeling is like, it's okay. And it's like the hardest thing to believe in because it's just like, 
everybody wants to see these super finished products and these super amazing things and it's like yo it takes time to get there and we do not praise that journey enough we like social media now just says hey you got to be amazing right up front and everybody's like how did i enter into the market and it's just like the greatest part of the save an artistic journey is the journey like the story behind these pieces and i was telling my friends it's like the context that makes it cool and it's interesting like you know the, the story behind this piece means like to somebody this was like a change in my life like it was a lesson that i'd learned and it's just like a lesson that then becomes represented to you and it's like it doesn't have to be what people think it has to be like you don't have to have the most expensive ex of, of stuff do the most crazy of things like it's about what you put into the, the not maybe the energy of it but into the creation of it like why and it's just like that becomes the intensity of the pieces and that was kind of something i'm now beginning to experiment with is just like just consciously realizing that my decisions are what makes it what it is and that's like art is based on the artist you know it's just like anybody after a while can technically recreate a mondrian or a basquiat like there's so many people that do that and that's you know that, that's the thing but creation like where it really is an art isn't about technical skill or anything else it's about uh, yeah just the attempt at it the trying that other people won't be doing so all right, so that was that piece, and now I am going to talk about the second piece. Okay, this one's kind of hard to see, and there's... Where did the... How did yellow get down there? That's kind of weird. I didn't even notice that before. But, um... Yeah, you can kind of see the similarity. There's this crossover between these pieces, like X is a representation of something. Um, yeah... It's, it's, like, it's almost like that same kind of emotion. Um, and as I tell the story about the one on the left, you'll see exactly why. But that idea that just like expressing yourself however you want to, like, because I'm thematically following something similar. And in my other five or six pieces, soon to be seven or eight, like, there's, you see it like a thread between them. And that X, like, this one was another one of those, like, uh, paper mache canvases I was working on. Maybe it was the next in the series. And I was going to do one of my crazy abstracts over the top of it. And I'm just like, I had some, I think it was some gold paint sitting um, around from, was it gold? Yeah, it's gold. Um, that's right, because I dry brushed this on with, because um, it was paint from a can, not from a spray can. So I brushed it on here, like trying to figure out what I want to do with it, kind of trying to figure out like, I don't know, like what's the value of everything? Because you know, we're always trying to find like value in something we do because that's kind of how our society is it's like value based like is this worth money and it's like that concept of gold being worth money from like from old times as like a rare rare substance and all that other stuff oh they were finally get it into focus um and so i was kind of experimenting with that and i wasn't exactly sure what to put on top of it um the weird part is like as i when i finished this one um and they pulled back and i was looking at it you could actually see a portrait in there like you can't see it anymore and that's the whole point of it is that you know, there was a face in the gold and that kind of had that get focus again, that cheesy representation of like, you know, we we should value that there's value in ourselves and you know, all of a sudden this I decided to slam over with the X, like black spray paint, completely destroy what you know, the incidental image that was there, because I wanted to say that, you know, we're continually destroyed by like our own value by like the filters and everything around us. And it's just like to break up that symbol and like representation and understanding of ourselves is just, you know, it's violence. And you know, you kind of get that from this one over here before as well. Um, when I decided to completely destroy the piece, <laughs> sorry, my roommate is now washing um, something off so they probably won't be able to hear the mic for a minute. So. Detail and yeah, that's like straight up black on there. But yeah, it's just like, you may not see it and that's completely okay because you don't necessarily need to see it in there. Um, the point is like, that's like, that's kind of what it is, art. Like you create something, you put this energy into it and, and the thought process into it. And it makes sense in a way. And it's like a lot of people, once again, they get stuck up on the technical aspects of it. Like, is this perfect enough to be this? Could you see it in a gallery? And it's like, the moment you get hung up on that stuff, I think is you lose the point. Like, you're like, oh man, because you, like, in art, yes, you always have to think on the commercial end because eventually it's going to have to sell to anybody. But it's only going to sell if it's really true to yourself. So, yeah, it's so, such a hard mindset to work with because it's like, you always got to be making money 
because that's what we're value based society. But at the same time, you got to be able to like, create and be who you are you know, as an artist, as a taste maker. And a lot of people aren't going to like this because it's super simple and super dumb. But that's just those people. I know there's enough people out there that like my stuff and like what it is. And that's not like ego, that's just understanding that as a business, there's a market out there. And it's like, I'm just being real to myself and taking the chance and creating. And I think anybody, like, you need to find some form of self-expression, like how to deal with your emotions and jazz like that. And like, I'm really horrible at that, getting better. But like, you learning to use art, and that's kind of a theme in a lot of my other, um, a lot of my other pieces too. But all right, yeah. So that's a little bit of the backstory on these. It's not about the technicality. It's about the uh, what you put into it and why you put into it. These are all part of a larger series. I think the uh, description is out on my website. I'll talk about that in a second. So, yeah. Good. Hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of that random rambling about these uh, two paintings. Alrighty then. So yeah, those are those two pieces. I hope um, that made some semblance of sense. Uh, I know there's a lot of like rambling, rambling going on, but it's like you get into the mindset and you remember some of the feelings you were going through and it's just like, that's kind of the helter skelter stuff that goes through my head as I'm creating it. Um, sometimes in the process, sometimes in post, like, but it's always in my head. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that, like I said. Uh, again, thank you to all those who said yes to, the on, yes to me on the Instagram uh, poll. That means a lot to me. I love getting interactions and engagements. Thanks so much! But um, yeah, so that brings us to the end of this uh, vlog. Now to the business parts that I always talk about. Um, if you like my art and want to be a part of it and want to subscribe to it or hit me up for a commission, you can follow my Patreon. Um, I believe I am Wessel is my Patreon out there. I got a bunch of different levels. And if you're more interested in getting some of the merch, like bags with my abstracts on it, um, yeah, that's on my website, uh, www.imwessel.com. Um, I also appreciate any likes, shares, comments. That's always awesome. Um, yeah, if you just want to come through and look and not say anything, that's also cool. So thank you, everybody. Uh, once again, it's a beautiful day out here in Los Angeles. Got a lot of stuff to do and no time to waste. So I'll see you all later.